All right, today on Free Field Training, we're going to be doing a little late night live stream talking about randomized patrol. People have asked a whole lot in the past about talking about more patrol techniques and how you can become a better cop or a security guard. Uh, and while lots of companies have very high level classes on this stuff here on Free Field Training, we're trying to give you the very entry level stuff, the things that you need to know to keep yourself safe and to make yourself more effective when you're first starting out on the job. My name is Tommy. If you are new here, I'm a, free, a field training officer and a full-time police officer in the greater Chicagoland metropolitan area. Those of you who know, know. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about randomized patrol, which is one of the keystones in proper police and security patrol tactics. Randomized patrol means that regardless of what memorandums come out or what policies the security company has or what the client says, you don't just go to the same location every X amount of minutes or X number of hours or a certain number of hits in a night. And while that's contrary to a lot of what is going on in the security industry, and it's contrary to a lot of what's been going on in the policing industry, at least in the area that I'm at, it is best practices and has been for very many years, and it works extraordinarily well. And I'm gonna explain to you how it works and how you can enact it in your daily patrols. Before we get into that, we're gonna pay some of the bills here. Uh, we have the giveaway. Uh, it is going up live on Instagram as soon as I'm done live streaming this. And that's gonna be posted up. We're gonna talk about that a little bit after I talk about randomized patrol. We're also gonna be doing the drawings for last month's YouTube and Instagram giveaways. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, there's a bunch of uh, sales going on. Uh, this month's giveaway, I've got a shield box with a bunch of really good stuff in it. There's a knife and a rescue litter and a bunch of other things, so stick around for that if you want to win that. Uh, there's a DRT Soap sent me soap, which is like a law enforcement company, but more importantly, they sent me a bottle of their uh, Vest Destinker, which uh, I haven't used much on my vest because it's the middle of winter here, but it does take cigar smoke out of cars pretty well, so there's that. Uh, I've also got, uh, Olight's got their flash sale going on. Of course, they said, oh, you do a video about our flashlight? And I said, yeah, sure. So here it is. That's the flashlight. It's coming out. It's blue. This is the video. There's a link to their sale down in the description, but that's also going on our, our giveaway, which is why I take this stuff from them because people like having flashlights, and it helps a lot of guys, especially at the very start of their career uh, where you can get a really cool new flashlight regardless of who it's from people love flashlights that are cops and security guards so that's should be a pretty good one i haven't even opened it up yet it's a rechargeable 2300 lumen light and you can like mount it to guns and stuff if you wanted to but given the little size it's probably just going to be a pretty good little patrol light for somebody or at the very least a good backup light for somebody so talking about randomized patrol. Patrol only works because people don't know where you're going to be. You've ever played a video game like the Hitman series uh, or Metal Gear Solid or anything like that. You know that it's real easy to plan if you see somebody using a schedule for when they're going to be at a certain location to avoid that person. So look at it from the bad guy's perspective. Let's say bad guy's going to rob the liquor store. And he knows that every two hours or so, this same little uh, white cop pulls in in the black and white squad in the parking lot of the liquor store, looks in the window, and then drives away. Or you're burglarizing cars. You're going to go find rims on cars. You're going to steal the rims off all the Honda Accords again this year. Even though every, you think they'd run out of Honda Accords to sell these rims to, like everybody's like kind of swapping them around. People get their rims stolen, and then they're buying stolen rims to put back on their car. Like you'd think everybody would figure out, just stop buying the same rim, but mm, people still do it. Uh, if you're that guy that's going out to steal rims, look at it from his perspective. If you're trying to secure the site, let's say the apartment complex, that's got a whole bunch of these cars in them, and you think, you know, we know this is going to be a problem with people trying to steal rims. We've had rims stolen previously. What am I going to do so that I can dissuade these people from coming here? If you drive around the parking lot every 20 minutes or every half hour or every hour, they know right when you drove through, you're going to be gone for X number of minutes. 
Thank you, Noah. Noah put a dollar ninety nine in the donut fund. I will get to whatever your comment is as soon as I'm done with the main part of this video. If you want to throw your comment up to the top, just donate a little money to the donut fund with the hyperlink thing with Bobber. As I was saying, they know you're not going to be there for a certain amount of time. And that's a major problem because you're giving them an opportunity to commit whatever dirt that they're going to commit. So two ways to make patrol random are uh, ingress direction and timing. What I like to do when I'm out on patrol, whether it's for the government or for a private entity, is they might say, hey, every shift, we want you to hit every gas station once. Or every shift, we want you to hit every gas station twice. Or uh, every half hour, we want you to make a, a circle of the complex or whatever. And I'll say, that's great. That's the minimum standard, right? You're all right if I do more than that. And normally, they're going to say yes, which then opens the door to what they're looking at is they want someone there and they want them there pretty regularly. Whether it's, it's on a private site or for the government, we want so many you know, impacts in this area. So what you do is you start by randomizing your time. I will pull into a gas station and drive through, look around. Okay. Nobody's moping by the front doors. Don't see anybody uh, four deep in a car looking like they're looking to carjack somebody. I drive out of the parking lot and then I won't come back for two hours. And when I come back, I will pull into the parking lot and I'll look around, do the same thing, and I'll drive away. And then not one minute later, I will pull right back into that parking lot from the same direction, the same way. So now they don't know when I'm going to come back. If someone's sitting across the street or down the block and they're watching that gas station, hey, you know, how often are the police coming here? If they're staking the place out, they don't know how often I'm going to come there because it could be two minutes, it could be two hours, it could be half an hour. And every time I do a hit at that gas station, every time I'm doing an impact at that gas station or site, they don't know when I'm going to come. They don't know if it's going to be every day, and I do it different every day. So it's not going to be every day at 2 a.m. He starts, he starts doing this. He's not going to be every day at 5 a.m. He's doing this. It's not going to be every day at 3 and 6 a.m. It's not going to be every day when the bar lets out, although bars are a different thing. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit with people's comments. If you've got comments about this, put them in there. But I'm going to make it completely random. Sometimes it's going to be four times in an hour. The first two of them are going to be five minutes apart, then another one in 20 minutes, and then another one 10 minutes after that. I want them to not know, and then I won't be there for three hours. And then I'll come back and make it look completely random. The same thing with private sites. If all you've got is this housing complex, let's say there's 15 buildings, and you're going to sit in the front. Most guys are sitting in the front of the parking lot, and they're watching TV on their phone, or we used to have portable DVD players back in the day, but now everybody just... You're streaming on your tablet or your phone or whatever. Instead of sitting at that site and then driving around every half an hour, you could sit there and drive around every three minutes for an hour or just keep circling the complex and then wait an hour and then come back and circle it a couple more times. Or you could wait three hours at the beginning of the night and then hit it really hard and then go away for a while. You want them to not know what's going on. The other one is location and direction of travel. And this gets into the secret sauce type of stuff. You don't want to keep driving. It, it, the problem I see with a lot of people is they'll, I mean, even on the public sector side, the cops will drive down the major street and they'll hit every gas station on that street. So if you're watching this gas station down here, let's say you're watching the, the BP st station, you see the cop pull into the BP station from east going west, pull into the parking lot, look around, pull out of the BP station, then drive three blocks down to the Sitco station, pull in there going from east to west, pull out of there, go further, four blocks further down, hop into the mobile station, look around, pull out of there, pull into the McDonald's parking lot, pull out of there, move into there, go across the street, and then work their way back down the other way. Come on. You're, you're not actually accomplishing anything by doing that. So what you want to do is, if you're going to do this, if they're all within visual you know, view of each other, one, don't just jump in it from a major street. If you've got side streets, jump, you know, pull up side street, cross the major street, straight into that parking lot. And then the next time when you come back two minutes later, you've pulled out of the out of the parking lot, go in eastbound, go around the block and pull right back into the parking lot, pull in from the other side, pull in from the alley, do your checks from the alley, pull into the alley behind whatever business you're going to check, get out of the car. I know this is, this is a shocking thing for people. 
but get out of your car and walk into the business from the alley. Now, if someone's watching businesses in your beat as a cop, and they're they're watching gas stations because they're oh we're gonna you know we're gonna pull some carjackings or we're gonna steal rims off of cars in this housing complex, and they see the cop assigned to that area, just appears on foot out of the alley, and walks into the business. Now you're putting some really doubt some some doubt into their head. Okay, that guy just appeared out of nowhere. Okay, maybe his car's parked in that alley. All right, and he walked around. Why would you do that? That's really weird. Start putting some doubt in their head. And then if you're appearing out of nowhere, they start looking around and being like, oh, crap. There could be more of him. <laughs> These guys could come out of anywhere, and that's what you want, and that's what randomized patrol is. Now, the big problem with randomized patrol uh, is you have distinct times that things are going to happen. If you've ever worked in a town that had a shopping mall or had bars or clubs or strip clubs or liquor stores or anywhere else that had a set closing time, where you're going to have a large number of people at this place and then it's going to close and they're all going to get kicked out, you know that that's probably where you're going to need to be at when that place is closing. And here's how you kind of handle that uh, with randomized patrol. Don't ever sit in the same place every night that the place is closing up. If you sit by the front doors of the club when it's closing up one night, sit all the way back in the back of the parking lot the other night with your lights on. If you're normally sitting all the way in the back of the parking lot with your lights on. Park one time on the side of the building, shut your lights off, and walk in and be with the employees inside when they're closing up. If you can't change the time or when you're going to be there, change where you appear from for people. So it looks like you could be anywhere. And that's the whole goal of patrol work and randomized patrols, that you could be anywhere. The added advantage of this not just from the deterrent side, is that you could actually be anywhere. So when you run across the people that are going to, you know, they walk up to do their dirt and they do the whole, mm -hmm, no cops down there, no cops down there. I don't see any undercover police cars. Most people don't know that undercover, long, I got a whole video on that, but like, oh, I don't see any uh, unmarked squad cars, which would be the proper term for that. I don't see any marked squads, I don't see any cops around. Looks like now's my opportunity to rob this chick and you're in the alley or you're across the street getting ready to drive across the street into that parking lot and that's how you catch people red-handed this is especially useful for burglars if you've got an area that you know is hard hit by auto theft burglaries or residential burglaries you want to be nowhere to be seen you want to just appear out of side streets and alleys on top of areas walk out from between buildings things like that you want to just show up places because when you just show up places, you see things that you wouldn't see if you were the police. Anybody that's a cop or a security guard and has then driven through their jurisdiction uh, when they're not working or grew up in the town that they're working in and are now a cop there know that people drive very differently. They act very differently when there's a marked police car and a cop in uniform around than when there are none. So what you want to do is take a peek when you're working into the world of when you're not there. And by doing this, uh, you increase deterrence because although you're not as visible to the public all the time, it's not the same as like parking a squad car on a corner that's empty and people see the, the police are there. So the old ladies on the block are like, oh, there's a police car there. But if you just randomly show up places, the people that you are actually trying to deter, it's like, oh, that cop came out of nowhere. And I'll tell you something, the old people do notice that you are just randomly showing up in their neighborhood. In fact, they will come outside to ask you what you're doing. And if you tell them, oh, there's been some burglaries in the area, so we're doing this randomized patrol thing. We want people to not know when we're just going to randomly show up in the neighborhood to, to check. You know, we're trying to actually catch these folks. They really appreciate it, and it gets good conversations going with the public. Not that I'm known as officer-friendly where I work or anything, but good community policing is good community policing. Community policing does work, even though it's not my primary goal. On patrol, I think that's, that's a big part of our job. It's not just chasing the bad guys around. Part of it is make it look like we're chasing the bad guys around so that way the public's behind us and they give us the resources and stuff that we need. So that's all I had down for a randomized patrol. And that's just one small aspect of police and security patrol work. I look forward to answering all of your comments and questions. Please keep putting them in there. If you've been watching, we've got uh, 60, 70 people watching. We're at 15 minutes. I'm going to try to wrap this up in another 15 minutes. We're going to take... 
those uh, super chats first, the people that drop money in the donut fund. And then we're going to go on to some other questions. Hopefully there's some topical comments and questions in there. So we're going to do the drawings for uh, Instagram and YouTube here. Got my, my little flyers. The Instagram one last month was pretty cool. It was a shield box. This is the Instagram one, right? A uh, shield box with a guardian angel device and some hearing protection and uh, Zach tools. Little, little guardian angel shoulder flashy light thing and a hat and all sorts of other stuff. We're going to draw that one here first and then the YouTube the uh, YouTube one next. So our first winner from last month's giveaways is Delmar16. Once again, if you guys have won something and you haven't gotten your thing, let me know so I can get it to you. If you have emailed back and forth with me and I said I was shipping it out and you still haven't gotten it, email me again or message me again so we can get it to you. I've got a whole basement full of stuff and half a garage full of... Ooh, I dropped one. Oop, hold on. And a whole garage full of other stuff that I don't want, that I don't need. So... And it's sitting there waiting to be given away. So even if your stuff got lost in FedEx UPS land, I will find other stuff to send you that you're probably going to love. Trust me. Let me pull the other one here. So this month we got Delmar 16 and Timothy Kormanski. Kormanski? I know he watches because I see that dude with comments all the time. So we're going to throw that up there for the YouTube giveaway. We'll get those guys their stuff. Or girls. I recently looked at my YouTube uh, analytics and found out that 8.5% of my audience is female, which is about 8% more than I anticipated when I looked at that. So we've got our giveaways going up on Instagram. Let me, uh, let me go through that really quick, and we'll get to some comments. This is the shield box this month. Like I was saying before, I wish I could zoom out on this phone. This phone is not as good as the other phone that I had. This is, when this finally goes live, you should be able to freeze frame that and take a look at it. There's some cool stuff in here. There is a knife, which I've always said with these subscription box things, when you could get a good mid-level $30 or plus knife out of the deal. You're always ahead. People are normally happy. I'm always happy when I get a free knife. Uh, quick litter. Quick litter is... I have never used one of these before, but I'm probably going to have to find a way to get one so we can try it out at work. It says it's rated to 750 pounds. I don't know. It's pretty light. Seems like the type of thing you would throw in the back of the car, uh, probably every car at work, and if you had a mass casualty incident or something... Uh, it's a soft litter, so it's basically just a tarp with handles on it. The fire department normally comes out with a much higher quality version of these to carry very large people out of houses that have issues that allow them to not allow them to walk up and down stairs. But be something nice to have around if you had uh, a major incident, lots of casualties, you need to evacuate them to get them to uh, substantially more definitive care like an ambulance that couldn't come in. There is... Uh, medical kit from my medic I opened this up previously and I regret to inform you that while it's an awesome little bag it's basically just this awesome little bag with some like band-aids and stuff in it so more like a DIY medical kit you get an awesome little bag with some pouches and stuff inside like a little EDC medical bag thing it is red my medic on the front is velcro so you can take that off and put something else on it and there's a little elastic area in the front, and it will molly attach to things. You know, if you're going to put this on your range bag or something, uh, but there's not a whole lot in it. So, fair warning, not a whole lot in it. Uh, stick and shoot, which is a reactive, it's like a, I think it's some sort of gel inside that like splatters when you shoot it with a gun. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six of those in there. Fun enough. And then a cocaine trace wipe which I have a video I need to do very shortly with a narcotics test kit. We're going to have to get that rolling too. Then there is, on top of the stuff from Shieldbox this month, 
There's links to shield box and all that. And coupon codes for all of this stuff down in the description if you guys are interested in buying it separately. I am going to throw in the uh, DRT soap. I haven't tried this because they only sent me one bar of the soap. It smells like your grandpa. That's the best I could say about it. it. smells like grandpa, so if you're an old fat ghetto cop like me, you're going to love it. It's going to be the perfect scent for you. This stuff is, smells a lot like tea tree oil and peppermint, which I guess is good because that's the smell that it's supposed to be is tea tree oil and peppermint. Uh, my wife uses tea tree oil for a lot of stuff, and my daughter uses peppermint for things, so it smells like both of them are in the same room after they showered. I guess that's a plus. And like I said, it does do a pretty good job on smoke on uh, soft materials. So, like inside of a car, maybe. That could be useful for, for some people. And I've got the Olight Warrior 3. And all of this is going on the giveaway on Instagram. As usual, all the rules and all that are up on Instagram. I'm going to post that as soon as I get done here with a picture of all the stuff. Hopefully, it all fits in the same box so I can ship it out easier. And then that we will draw next month, I think, depending on when the next shield box or when I get enough cool stuff all together to make a giveaway worthwhile. I don't want to ship boxes out that aren't something like a bunch of really cool stuff all together for you guys. So that's it for that. That's going to be up. Uh, basically, you just tag friends on the Instagram giveaway, and that's how you get entered. And then I cut up all the little slips. In reality, I print them, and then I have my kids cut up all the little slips <laughs> and put them in the tray. And then we pick it the next time we do a giveaway. So I'm going to pull this back so I can actually see it. Eyes aren't getting any better out here. Uh, we got a bunch of people who threw money in the donut phone, so we're going to take them first. I'm going to go from the back to the top, and then we're going to cut it at uh, about you know, 30, 35 minutes. YouTube goes nuts if these go too long. Uh, freshman rule. Uh, put $5 in donut sun and said... Your opinion on driving your cruise lights solid blue versus no lights on nights. So where I'm at, we don't have a solid red and blue lights for the light bar. Like there's no button that I can just turn the lights on and leave them on. That's kind of against the Illinois vehicle code, although I do know some agencies that do it. Uh, what we have is we have the rear, I can turn the rear lights on. So they just flash to the back which does essentially the same thing because you're going to see the flashback. It's going to grab people's attention that the rear lights are, are flashing back there. But what that does is it doesn't auto activate the camera in the car and the body camera and all the other stuff uh, anytime I have the lights on. So I can turn those on just to kind of sit somewhere and have presence. But it's not a good idea to drive around with them on. I personally don't think it's a great idea to drive around with solid red or red and blue lights or solid blue lights or solid red lights just on on the light bar, that the solid on red or blue or red and blue lights on the on the roof because it's distracting to other drivers those things are really really bright uh, so i don't particularly think that's a really great idea i don't drive around with the rear lights on what i'll do is i'll drive to an area and if i want to show more presence in that area let's say the bowling alley is shutting down at two o'clock in the morning and it's the type of crowd you'd expect to be hanging out at a bowling alley at two o'clock in the morning and so you know every night there's a fight there so we're going to have a fight there again tonight so you go to the area of the bowling alley, you park across the street, or you park in the parking lot, or you park by the front door, you turn the rear red and blue lights on so people can see something flashing over there. And they just look over, oh, that's a police car. And they know it's not an empty police car because the red and blue lights are flashing in the rear. So, and the, you know, the headlights are on so they can see, oh, there's a cop parked over there. And that's a really useful thing to do. Uh, I don't like driving around with the red and blue. It's just running all the time. For security, I know a lot of security companies drive around with the flashing amber lights all the time for visibility. Uh, for them, since the primary goal there for most security companies is deterrence, it makes sense to do that. Uh, although I still don't think it's necessarily the best thing on midnights when what they're trying to do is make sure nobody breaks into the building. It might be better to, again, transport yourself from one area to another, blacked out completely, and then turn the lights on so you're like, oh, there's a security car over there. And then disappears for a while and then it shows up somewhere else that disappears for a while and shows up somewhere else one of the problems that we have with how bright the lights are on our cars uh, for police cars and you know modern lights for security cars as well is they're bright and they actually the lights flashing and bouncing off the buildings and signs and stuff and it basically tells people before you even round the corner that you're coming so if somebody's breaking into a car and you have your red and blue lights on or you have the yellow lights flashing they're seeing these flashing yellow or red and blue lights 
you know, coming toward the corner before they can ever see the car or see the actual lights on the roof, they're seeing it bouncing off of stuff. They go, oh, there's a squad car coming. All right, let's get back in the car. Let's get out of here. So I think it's a, a better tactic. And I have seen from my experience and my experience only, it's a better tactic to drive to a location, make your presence known at that location, then disappear and then reappear at another location without warning. That's what's worked well for me. Let's see where the other super chats are at. Uh, Freshman Rule says, how much coffee did it take to knock this one out at at this time, huh? How much coffee did it take to knock this one out at this time, huh? Okay, so we're recording this. It's a little past midnight right now, live streaming it. We got 75 people watching, which is great, and watching live. And I have gone through at least a pot and a half of coffee and one of those Monster Energy Juice you see the, the Monster Energy Juice? It's got like the skull, on, the, the bones on the front of it. Stuff's really good too. Uh, so I had one of those today and then I'm back to, uh, I've actually got iced coffee in this because it's a little warm in the house. Probably doesn't help me wearing the polar fleece inside. But uh, but between the basement and the upper floor, it, it, long story short, I, I've drank a lot of coffee today. But I am on midnights right now and so the amount of coffee that I go through is just kind of to reset my circadian rhythm every few days. You get on midnights, and then you got court in the morning, and then, you know, you end up not going to sleep till 11 a.m., and then you got to come back to work at 10.45, and it just, it becomes, midnights becomes a mess for everybody. Anybody that's well overworked midnights knows that, and that's probably why I'm talking really fast. Although, when I get onto these types of topics, one of the reasons that I like doing field training is because I like talking about these things and teaching other people about them, and so it's pretty easy for me to just pull this stuff off the top of my head. I actually have absolutely no notes for this one at all. It's like, what am I going to talk about for this week's giveaway? Oh, randomized patrol. I could pontificate on that for hours. Let's scroll up further, see who else we have through money in the donut fund here. Noah Dinsmore says, thoughts on the Blackhawk Serpa duty holster. I don't recommend the level two Blackhawk Serpa duty holster. I don't have any a personal experience with using it because I won't use it because there have been lots of very negative stories about people with uh, very severe repercussions to using those uh, Serpa holsters that only have the little finger interlock on it. I don't trust anything that's just a little trigger guard interlock that you can operate with your, your index finger. I know some people that really like them and I know some people that are required by policy to use them. Uh, I know some cops that use the Serpa uh, holsters for off-duty or for uh, plainclothes work, like detectives and stuff, because departments have policies saying that you have to have at least a certain level of retention, and they define what that retention is. So if there has to be a device that you have to disengage in order to pull the pistol out, and they want a Kydex holster, or they want something that's polymer, not necessarily Kydex, but something that's polymer, it's very easy, you don't have to clean a lot, uh, that kind of narrows you down to Serpus. And so I know a lot of cops that use them, but I don't, and I don't like them. I've I've owned one, and it didn't it didn't go all that hot. I didn't really like it. So I don't recommend the level twos. If you were on a... I know that really good holsters cost a lot of money, so if you were on a huge budget, I guess it's okay to use the level three one because it's got an actual guard that goes over the top of the pistol and keeps it from... Like physically keeps it from coming out. It's not just a little dongle that uh, they could get bumped and the gun comes undone or could get broken easily and the gun comes undone or would cause, you know, somebody ending. It's a lot harder with the duty ones, with the level threes. I know Blackhawk has other holsters that I, I have not tested them uh, that are just the hood on the top. I think it's called Epoch or something, Epoch holster. Uh, those, I guess, are all right. It's kind of, it's another variation on the hood holster. But the level two that's just the little finger tab, I, I wouldn't use that. It's not a level two even. It should be considered a level one. Uh, and I would not recommend using any of the concealed carrier sport line, just the finger tab, Blackhawk hol uh, Serpa holsters for duty use or even uh, even in the station. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even bother using those. I know a lot of guys do. A lot of people get upset at me for saying I wouldn't use them, but I wouldn't use them. Uh, partially because I've got a bunch of other holsters. Like, I would rather just use a Phobos holster and know that there's no retention than have any belief that that, that little finger thing is going to give me something to even make somebody think about 
uh, in a gun grab situation. I think it's kind of like carrying a 25 caliber pistol. It's it's a whole lot more about making you feel good than it is about uh, actual personal protection. That's going to upset a bunch of people too, but it's the truth. That's just, it's my personal opinion. I wouldn't do either of those things. All right, let's take a few of these comments before we sign off here. We're at 30 minutes. We, I think that's all, that should be all the Super Chats. So everybody that paid is done. If you want to get your comment in, uh, now you've got something new to say, you can throw it on a Super Chat and I'll pop down to it. Uh, 1 a.m. is still up for this, awesome. Do, do, do. Hello, 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 hello from Washington State. Somebody said 30 fr frames per second. That's just live streaming off my phone. Sup, Tommy, I just got promoted. Should I carry dog spray? Never use dog spray for anything. That's really something more for postal employees around here. Uh, if you're in an area that has lots of dogs and you're not allowed to be armed with anything else, I guess dog spray might be a good idea. OC spray tends to work pretty good on dogs as long as they're not too aggressive. If they're just like oh, really curious, you could OC spray them. Uh, one thing that I found that's uh, really effective on dogs is batons, especially extendable batons. You get the little yippers, you can just kind of like shush them away and they can bite at this all day. That's <laughs> They can bite at that all they want. I don't care. They can bite at the baton. That would be my recommendation. Just finished the hiring process starting in two weeks. Thanks. You're very welcome. Hope you got a lot of good information from me and hopefully you'll learn a whole lot more when you're on the job. Brushing Teeth said, did you respond to an armored truck shooting in southern Chicago? You shared a news story about it a few days ago. I shared a news story about it because it's a big thing around here. And I know a lot of you do armored car work and do security work at banks. And I thought it would be very uh, applicable to people in the community here online. Uh, that wasn't my case personally, but uh, I know of several other instances that were very similar and some almost instances that were very, very similar that happened in my area. So not only do I know that that happened, but I know that it could have happened anywhere because it sounds like that crew was kind of rolling around uh, looking for armored cars to hit, which is very common around the holiday season. So that's that was my, my personal involvement with it was I knew in advance that this was something that was going on. And then uh, the, the reason for sharing it is a lot of people here, probably if you're new to doing armored car work, you know that the holidays, you need to know that the holiday season, man, there are crews of people that are going around looking to hit armored cars. Uh, ME 5150 says, howdy, watching on the car MDT. Probably shouldn't do that. Uh, Brush and T says, randomized times is very important in armored car driving. It is very important in armored car driving. I don't do uh, armored car work, and I never have. Uh, the best I've ever done with that is uh, getting detailed to go watch the armored cars while they go do their stuff. So uh, I would imagine that doing random times would be important for armored cars. Uh, honestly, most of them I see, they have a pretty regular schedule. And if I'm noticing it's a pretty regular schedule, then most bad guys are looking to rob them. Probably know it's a pretty regular schedule too. Uh, Keller Fabrer says, I'd love to hear about typical career paths that cops go through before becoming a detective. I've got a whole video on that. I'll try to remember to put a link somewhere, but I probably won't. Uh, it's like becoming a police detective or CSI. You can watch that. All of that still really applies. There are some people that are, you know, straight out of the academy. They do a year on patrol and they go straight to detectives or investigations or whatever you call it in your area. That's pretty rare and most of them are politically connected. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to do a few years on patrol. You're going to do some other... Uh, more minor off-the-street assignments and you're going to be put to detectives unless you have some some prior experience uh, doing police work. Ruin Winter says, I have my Eagle Ceremony Sunday. Does being an Eagle Scout make a difference in law enforcement or getting hired? Uh, you're going to be surprised once you get hired how many cops you run into that are also Eagle Scouts for some reason they'll serving the community thing seems to come up on a regular basis. I never made a difference for me in the hiring process. 
But knowing and instantly having a bond with other people that have the same shared experiences makes it a lot easier to make friends at work and to network, which is always good. Uh, for some reason, it, law enforcement has been the only industry where that hasn't been like a really big thing. People are like, oh, yeah, that's really interesting. And law enforcement like, so? And that's just my area. That's been my experience. So probably won't help you get in the door, but once you do, you'd be surprised. I mean, if you're an Eagle Scout now, you know that there's like a whole community. It's kind of like a, a fraternal organization where guys are willing to help each other out just on the knowledge that the other guy's also an Eagle Scout. Or girl now, I guess. Like, it's just kind of, in the last couple of years now, we've got uh, female Eagle Scouts out there. What do I need to stay warm in winter here in Canada? I'm starting night shift. You are going to need, in the next couple of months, you're going to need long johns. Like really good thick long johns, especially thick in the arms. A 221B makes long johns that are thicker in the arms than they are in the body. Check those out. Uh, tell them I said hi. Uh, they've sent me stuff. They're like a supporter on the channel. Uh, and also Cabela's sells these polar weight long johns that in the, the deepest, darkest, negative 30 below Fahrenheit winters of Chicago are just fantastic. Especially the pants. They have these, they have pants that are just, they're so thick. They're like polar fleece on the inside. They're fantastic. So I would start there and then some boots that are at least 600 grams of insulation. Up in Canada, you might need a thousand, but those are a little harder to find. Brush and Teeth is finally happy with my content. You're very welcome, whoever Brush and Teeth is. Never got the real name. Likes to have nice clean teeth. Uh, John Parks says, cool insight. Any experience working with Metro Police? Yes. I am thinking about joining and going through the initial exams. Uh, Metro is not a bad agency to go to. Uh, right now, we've got a couple guys that went through our process and came to us from Metro. They're not the highest paid department. Their benefits aren't the best. Uh, their working conditions aren't fantastic. Their equipment isn't fantastic. Uh, you can bind all of those things better in other places. The advantages of Metra is that it's a good place to get your foot in the door. They will send you to the academy. They hire people on full-time, so you're not doing the part-time uh, screw-around game. And also, it's a really great foot in the door to get into a higher-paying agency later on. So in the market right now, I don't want to dissuade you for going and working for Metra, but there are 20 agencies in the Chicago metro area that are screaming for people right now at least 20 agencies that are screaming for people and everybody is trying to hire. So I would shop around a little bit more before I signed on to Metra if I was just starting out. As a lateral, if you're talking about lateraling onto Metra, I, I wouldn't bother. I would I would find there's, if you're a lateral right now, you can pretty much name your own price in the south suburbs. I mean, that somebody will take you if you're lateraling from another agency. So I would, I would get through all of the places I could lateral to uh, that were higher paying than Metro before I went to Metro. But it's not a bad place to work. It's just they don't pay as well as other places. <coughs> Brush and Teeth asks, how has your SWAT training helped you in randomized patrol or other? Uh, shouldn't every copy SWAT train sooner or later to benefit from the knowledge uh, for a lifetime? Well, SWAT gives you a perspective on a different realm of law enforcement. Just like I think... Uh, detectives make some of the best patrolmen because they know how the flow goes after you take the report. So they understand what needs to go in it. I also think that uh, former SWAT guys make the best patrolmen uh, from the tactical side of it, from the operational side, because they're seeing things through very different eyes. Where someone that came from uh, the police academy sees things uh, a certain way. Detectives see the the investigation after the fact type of twist and then your SWAT guys see a good better best as far as tactics is concerned someone that's coming just straight on a patrol or who goes into an investigations field and then comes on to patrol uh, won't have the same mindset as somebody that spent some time in SWAT and understands how things can go sideways and how to keep them from going sideways how to get actually get ahead of somebody's OODA loop people talk about getting ahead of their OODA loop but in SWAT, it's imperative that guys learn how to actually get way ahead of people's OODA loop. SWAT likes to come in, and before you even know what's going on, you're already in cuffs. And that's a really good skill set to have. 
It's also a good skill set to be able to know how to use all of the, the extra equipment in case that comes up and how to integrate in with SWAT if that becomes something that becomes necessary when you're on the street. Uh, for instance, it's good to know when SWAT shows up which one is the AB corner so that you're all speaking the same language. So while I don't think it's imperative that everyone go and do SWAT, I think it would be awesome if most patrolmen got the opportunity to go to SWAT school so that they know where that side of the law enforcement is going to, is, is coming from when they're talking. Just like I think, while not everybody would be a great candidate to be a detective, everyone should go to investigative classes so that way when you're dealing with an investigation, you've got a better idea of what you're doing. An area of my career that I would really like to expand, but right now it's hard to get the time off to do anything, let alone go to classes. Taxes. It, I love doing randomized patrol in the rural county because do those types of routes, but I get to hide in the trees and watch them leave the same way I went in, and it's goofy for no reason. Well, it's a randomized patrol. Like I'm coming at it mostly from a very urban setting or suburban setting, and I'm sure in the in a rural area it's a lot of the same stuff. But you get to use some other tricks that we don't. There aren't a lot of woods for me to hide in, at least not near areas that have high crime. So I imagine if you're doing something like uh, a wildlife enforcement, like there's some other skill sets there, but it's still a lot of the same stuff. It's randomized patrol. You can look at the, the wildlife guys are great at that. If you've ever been hunting or fishing, they literally come out of nowhere and walk up to you. You don't ever see them coming. Maybe you'll see them across the lake. You see the squat, the car pull up. You'd be like, oh, that's the Illinois State Conservation Police. I know they're going to be out here watching for people. You're going to be watching what you're doing. Everybody got their license? Because they're going to be coming around. They're going to be checking. Tech says, I literally hid in a bush when I was doing security work, and it kind of worked. It does sometimes. I have actually, I have watched people from the woods, but it's it's very rare. We had a flasher a few years ago that I caught by, by having some scouting skills, going back to the whole Eagle Scout thing. Having some scouting skills, I was able to, to catch the flasher. What is your handcuffs for on duty right now? Right now I'm using the ASP Ultra Cuffs because uh, I want to see how they work out long term. You don't have to go buy ASP Ultra Cuffs. Uh, there are cheaper handcuffs that work. Smith & Wesson Model 100s work just fine. But ASP Ultra Cuffs have some other features that I really like and that I'm trying out because they sent them to me. If you want a link for those and a coupon code that saves you some money and makes me a little in the process, check down below. If not, go buy whatever handcuffs are going to work for you. Just, I wouldn't go below the like $20 to $25 threshold. Get an actual pair of cuffs from an actual company. Smith & Wesson, Peerless, Hyatt, Asp, those. Not the, the like knockoff spray painted pot metal ones. And no fuzzy ones. Don't bring the fuzzy ones to work. So here, here's somebody getting to the limits of my knowledge. Uh, 835 Scribner 07 says, Hey, Tom, a new officer working Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Wondering if you have any tips for someone policing a wealthy resort slash tourist town. The area I work in is not wealthy, it is not a resort, and it's not a tourist town. So while I'm sure a lot of this might come in handy for you, and you can check through the channel for some stuff that might help, I don't have any specific <laughs> suggestions for wealthy tourist towns. I'm sorry. Hello from Russia. Hello. Brushing T says, have you overthought your gun choices over the innovating years? What AR-15 would you buy nowadays if you didn't have one? What bug? Maybe a Kimber K66 shot 357J frame. So I think about this sometimes, and if I was to go back and start all over again, I would probably buy the exact same stuff at the times that I bought them. Uh, at the time I bought my Rock River, my Rock River was a good brand. People don't know this, but if you're under the age of 30... It's going to come as a shock to you, but gun companies ebb and flow in their quality control quite significantly. Uh, if I was going to go back, I was going to buy something different for an AR. I'd probably buy a Colt. Because at the time, again, Colt was a very high-quality rifle. Uh, I would I would have bought the Glock 22 that I started with, and I would have bought a Glock 35 at the time I bought that. Uh, and the only reason I'm thinking of switching now is because our ammunition choice has switched. So I'm thinking about going to 9mm. Probably staying with Glock, mostly because I already know it, and there's no reason to throw all that out the window 
Uh, as far as upgrading the revolver, the revolver I use now is is already probably the height of technology. I have a Smith & Wesson 360 PD, which is a scantium frame with a titanium cylinder and steel inserts. And it's pretty much the height of technology for revolvers as far as I think they're really going to go. Uh, and I haven't handled the Kimber K6 other than at SHOT Show. And I didn't get to shoot it there. So maybe in the future, I'll think about changing out the revolver to something else. But the K6 is still pretty heavy. It's still a pretty heavy steel 357. And that wouldn't work for the same things that I use my 360 PD for. So I don't think I would change anything now. If I was going to go back, if I was a new guy starting today, uh, <coughs> if I was a new guy starting today, I would probably get uh, a 6920, just a Colt 6920. They're still a pretty high quality rifle, especially the law enforcement only ones. Uh, those are still look like they're pretty high quality, uh, mainly because of what brands were required to use at work. You know, I can't I can't just get whatever pops into somebody's mind that they're going to create a company around. Uh, if I was going to start today, I would get a Glock 34. If I was going to suggest a gun for someone to start today, uh, I always suggest them the same thing. Go to the gun shop, pick up a Glock 19 or a Glock 17, and see which one you think will work better for you. Shoot both of them and then decide. Because if you're going to get holsters or mags or mag pouches or lights or holsters for lights or anything that's going to integrate with them, those two are going to be the easiest things to get things for. And they're also perfectly confident uh, in 2021 and I'm sure into 2022. And I don't expect until we get to sp uh, more affordable uh, spits or rounds for handguns that we're going to have anything that, that greatly advances beyond that. So Brush and Teeth says here in Washington DC patrol cars have small blue lights on top that do not flash and do not disturb other drivers. It's basically just a clearly marked police car even at night. That makes sense. I haven't seen that. It's been quite a while since I uh since I've been to DC, probably since I think eighth grade. Connor Coleman says more lights need brightness adjustment. I agree. More cops need to learn how to use the light brightness adjustment, and more companies that are installing them need to know how to how to wire them up so you have the brightness adjustment switch. We're gonna we're gonna scroll through here and see if we had anything about randomized patrol before I sign off because we're getting pretty long in the tooth here. Tack says, can you give advice on dealing with crappy FTOs? I've never had this problem in security or corrections, but recently it's been hard. I am going to actually, I'm sorry, everyone, but that's a really good question. I'm going to screenshot that so I can use that for a stream in the future. Everybody saying thanks and hi, thank you all. Can you use your personal firearms for duty use where I'm at? Yes. Most places in the Chicago metro area, yes. Some places in other parts of the country, no. Uh, all right, so we're going to get down to the last super chat here. Freshman rule, put $5 in the donut fund. Thank you again. It says, tactical ghillie suit to hide in the bushes. It's not exactly something I would use in my area. Uh, the great thing about my area is that this stuff tends to blend pretty well. Anything that's dark blue or gray tends to blend pretty well in an urban environment. Uh, militaries have been looking for urban camouflage for a long time, and nobody's thought about light blue shirts and dark blue pants nobody ever sees me coming for whatever reason they're always really shocked when i show up and i think at night dark blue works a lot better than black does and works a lot better than most camouflage patterns that are meant for the woods that kind of stick out at least if you're not trying to hide in bushes if you're trying to hide up against buildings dark blue looks a lot more like a shadow in my experience we should see if there's some studies on that All right, and that's going to be about it. I don't want to go over an hour. If I go to an hour, YouTube starts freaking out. Thank you all, 77 of you.
for stopping through. Thank you for the people that put the a little money in the donut fund to keep me afloat. When I get done with this, I'm going to go over to Instagram and I'm going to post a picture. It's going to look something like all of this stuff laid out. It's going to say shield box. It's going to have them tagged. And it's going to have all the rules and stuff on there. Basically, the long story short of it is tag a friend. You get an entry. Generally speaking, I don't I don't check to see if people do multiple entries. So feel free to do multiple entries with different friends. Don't be posted. Don't be tagging Mike the cop and donut operator and stuff. Your actual friends, people that might, the idea is to draw more people to the Instagram and the YouTube channel, right? So help me out a little bit. Tag some people that are actually, if you're a police explorer and you want to win a bunch of cool stuff, right? Tag people that are other police explorers that can win, right? Like if you're a security guard somewhere, uh, instead of getting all, all crappy in the comments about me calling it security guard when that's exactly what you do and I do the same thing on the side, Take some time, try to win a flashlight by telling other people about winning a flashlight so we can get more people on board with getting this good information, right? That's the whole idea, right? I'm going to take this one final comment before we go. Colin Hastings says, advice for a criminology student looking to get into law enforcement. That's not what criminology is. Get a business degree. Criminology is a hobby. If you're going to... You're going to learn about policy. That's great, but that's not a law. Criminology isn't a law enforcement thing. Maybe for the FBI or something. I don't know. Maybe they got somebody, somebody that works at the desk in a basement. Uh, you're better off. You're better served. You're going to college to get a degree in business. Uh, if you're going to go into law enforcement, you want to advance public administration. Uh, if, if you really have to, you could do for criminal justice, but that's, I'm I really 100% serious. That's pointless. A criminal justice degree does nothing for you uh, unless you want to work at an agency that requires a criminal justice degree. And very few do. I think the ATF is like the only one or DEA. Somebody like that requires it. Very few require a criminal justice degree. Get a bachelor's degree in, if you want to go to college, get a bachelor's degree in pretty much anything but a law enforcement topic. Do not get a bachelor's degree in forensics. There are no jobs for people with bachelor's degrees in forensics. Criminology, uh, homeland Security, bachelor's degree. Look for jobs that require a Homeland Security bachelor's degree. Get back to me when you find one, right? This is marketing fluff. Get a degree in business, get a, a degree in, uh, in public administration, and public administration degree will actually come in handy. Human resources management as, a, as an entry-level cop, you're going to learn how to deal with your boss and you're going to know a lot about business, especially if you go into an area that's like very union heavy. You're going to know about the union stuff. That's way more useful than a criminal justice degree, which is basically the same class being taught over and over and over and over and over again and called different things, <laughs> which has been my experience and lots of other people's experiences. Uh, the only people telling you to go get a criminal justice degree to be a cop are the administrators who teach the criminal justice classes because they want your money and people that are getting sponsored by universities, which... Has not happened to me yet, probably because I tell people not to get criminal justice degrees. It's decisions we have to make in life, whether we want to be honest or make a lot of money. So, until next week, guys, be safe. Take care of each other. Thank you for everybody stopping by. Head on over to Instagram. There's a link down below.